Hey, what is up, guys? This is Ricky V, and you're listening to episode number 12 of the Underground Evolutionary Radio Podcast, whatever we call it now. Hey, Steve, uh, my co-host, say what's up to the people, Steve. We are here. How's everyone going? Hope everyone is doing well out there. We have a really fun show ahead. We're going to be discussing some great Geneza products. So, Rick, what is the first song we're going to talk about? Mainly today, what um, we're going to talk about today is uh, we're going to lean uh, hard information into uh, Winstrol and Trembolone. Winstrol and Trembolone are two very popular products that come in a lot of different iterations. There is a Winstrol injectable, there's Winstrol oral, different strengths. There is Trembolone injectable in different esters because Winstrol doesn't have an ester. And there is Trembolone oral, methyl Trembolone, which you can only have a couple of milligrams off a day or your liver might just uh, melt. <laughs> so it's uh, definitely a couple of real interesting compounds, real, real interesting compounds, uh, uh, two that uh, both Steve and I have had some experience with. Now, um, I'm going to bring Steve in uh, to begin talking about Trembolone. Trembolone and the effects of Trembolone. Now, Steve, he's a, he's a serial monogamist. You know, he'll... He'll have a, a girlfriend here and there for years. But anytime he gets on that trend, he starts going hard, banging strippers. Like Steve really gets after the strippers whenever he's on the trend. So I want him to kind of describe for you guys what it feels like, what it does in his brain when he's on that, on that trend. And here, guys, we're talking about, <clears throat> at the end of the day, at the at the root, at the end of the day, guys, we're really talking about good quality Trembolone. You know, you're not going to reinvent Trembolone. It's the esters and some methyl trend. I mean, it is what it is, but is it good, high quality Trembolone? You're not getting something switched out. You're not dealing with something that says, is, you know, 100, 200 on the label is really 50. You know, you don't, we're talking about good quality trend. You are on the dosage that you are. Uh, you think you are on tell me a little bit more steve uh, what is your experience you know tremble on the sex drive the the risk taking the motivation what does it feel like share it with us so tremble on is very unique to other steroids and there's a reason that tremble on is called by those of us who've experienced it many many times the relationship killer as rick alluded to and the reason Trenbolone does this, you know, my, my theory behind it is a couple of things. It's not just the physical effects. Everyone wants to always focus on physical this, physical that. When you're on Trenbolone, you're going to get a hell of a lot stronger. You're going to get, your physique is going to dramatically change. Within two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, your physique will literally change. Amazingly. And it's going to give you a lot of confidence. It's that, but it's also the mental effects that Trembolone does, the way it messes with the dopamine in your brain, the neurotransmitters in your brain. And this is going to cause you to really want to explore yourself. And it doesn't matter. It could be exploring yourself sexually. It could be with, with, a, with a job. It could be many, many different things. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you want to do those things. And a lot of guys, they not only ruin relationships on Trembolone, they also ruin jobs on Trembolone because of the effects it causes. Um, a lot of guys end up in jail on Trembolone. You know, they, they get more aggressive. Uh, they might go out and get themselves into trouble on Trembolone. Because Trembolone does a lot of things to us that make us accelerate some of the things that we tend to be like. Like if we have a really interesting uh, libido effect, okay, taking trend will accelerate that. 
And it might make you want to do things from a sexual standpoint that you may not, may not normally like to do. Like if you like to be monogamous and exclusive relationships, taking trend may make you stray from that. And you'll start cheating on your significant other. You'll start break, you'll break up with her because you want to see other people. You'll want to see a different girl every, every other day or a different guy every other day. It's going to make you think differently about things and it's going to change you in a lot of ways. It's going to make you a different person. So that's what Tremblone does. And as far as the mental effects that it does, and it does this very uniquely compared to any other steroid out there. It really is a steroid that if you want to take and you want to open those can of worms, you really have to be aware of that. And this is why we do these podcasts to kind of educate you guys to make sure you understand that these types of effects are possible before you take it. And as a warning, before I started using trend, I had read stuff like this here and there, but I was not fully aware of what Tremblone was capable of doing. And that's one of the, the effects that kind of took me by surprise was that, you know, if you like to be, you know, in a stable, committed relationship, taking trend is going to want, is going to make you feel like shit. I want to start dating other women, you know, drive your spouse nuts that you're like that. And that's, that's, that's kind of uh, why they call it the relationship killer right there. So it's definitely a steroid. <clears throat> You should experiment with. If you're serious about bodybuilding, you're serious about strength training, you're serious about being a gym rat, when you're ready, Tremblone is an absolute must to try. But you have to be aware of what I'm telling you. So it's probably better if you try it when you're single, not when you're in a relationship for that reason. I'll take it over to you, Rick. What do you have to say? Uh, just steroids in general make you feel more, uh, you know, make you feel more, you know, what more is just whatever, just being on the source makes you feel that extra umph. You know what I mean? And Tremblone is a, it's a culprit at a really low dosage. Trombolone is going to make you feel crazy. Now, throughout the years, I've had my uh, different uh, ways of experimenting with Trombolone. When, when I first got into the game, Trombolone was not available. Trombolone had been out um, for, had been out through legitimate pharmaceutical channels a couple of times throughout its discovery. And by the time I got onto the game, uh, the last Trombolone had been discontinued uh, years ago, Parabolin from uh, Negma France had, had been gone for a while. And uh, I was a couple of years into the game, into uh, enhancing when some dude named Animal on the forums uh, put together a, a whole process that you could use to extract veterinarian, veterinarian trembolone from Fendiplex H. Pellets. And uh, the process, the, the first uh, process was not very refined. You know, really, it should have been standard to run the mixture to two or three Wattman filters. Uh, only one was being used. And, and that's just a start. I mean, there were a lot of different things that could have been better, but uh, Trembolone started being extracted from Finiplex H pellets. And if you didn't really catch on real early on that you couldn't shoot the cloudy uh, final product, you had to run it through as many Wattman filters as it took to get, to get really clear. If you didn't realize that, you get some, some golf ball uh, size uh, knots. And um, the early adopters had some of the... <coughs> had some of the knots from shooting uh, that first tremble that wasn't very refined. As the years went by, the demand, obviously, like any market, uh, drove different players to bring out their own versions of very clean, clean trembolone. Now, this was not trembolone that needed to be extracted from uh, cattle pellets. This was actually trembolone that 
they were sourcing straight from very good, reputable laboratories in China and were coming into places like Mexico legally for the veterinarian market. So uh, a lot of these are veterinarian brands out of Mexico that had licenses to sell all kinds of different products. They actually imported Trembolone and put out licensed through the Mexican government versions of Trembolone. Dencal was, I believe, the first veterinarian brand out of Mexico to come out with a Trembolone product. And this is one of those uh, situations in the marketplace where demand drives the, the sort of innovation demand and the no, and these outfits these outfits that were catering to bodybuilders noticing the demand um, were really were really quick to react. It only took them you know a few months to realize that if people were going through the trouble of extracting tremble on out of uh, <laughs> out of cattle, Appellants, which is the only tremble that was available in the marketplace in the early 2000s, that if people were doing all of that, that maybe if they made it easier, they could have some customers, and they did. They they sold out a couple times over in their first uh, couple of uh, releases into the market. It, it, tremble was legendary. From the parable in days, tremble was legendary. I, imagine that the early to mid 90s, where the internet didn't and information didn't move as freely. So Tremblon was around in like Europe and a lot of our bodybuilders had just been in the U.S. using the stuff that was here. And then the bodybuilding federation, federations grew and there were different things going on. And some guys started going over there to Europe and coming, going back and forth, um, competing there as well and learned about some of the really cool steroids that were available in Europe that, that maybe weren't available in the U.S. or in Mexico at the time. And uh, Trembolone was one of them. Trembolone was one of those really interesting, strong, very hard steroids that became kind of in style, you know, in vogue, became fashion in the early 90s. Um, and yeah, that's a good, good, good uh, little, little history lesson on Trembolone. Now, when it comes to trend today and, and what we have out there today, uh, there's good trend and there's bad trend. You know, there is a uh, trend alone by fly by night operations that um, are making garbage. And then there's good, good trend alone made by uh, underground laboratories that are really grown and become huge uh, across the world and, and make really good high level stuff and in good facilities. There are uh, tons of podcasts that I've done and Steve and I have done about how this whole hierarchy of manufacturing kind of works and, and how some of the bigger players in, in the marketplace that, that have the capital that are moving the units can and do uh, test and they can afford to, to buy the amounts and get it from the, the places where the raw materials are real clean. Uh, they can test it before and after they could really go through all of this process because uh, since the batches are so large, it, it makes absolute sense. And, and financially, it's not as impacting as maybe your guy down in, in Florida, you know, your Florida man, or maybe your dude uh, up in Michigan somewhere, you know, the, or, or your guy in, in the Northeast, you know, the Bronx. Like these are dudes I've seen online claiming that they're uh, even on social that they're making and baking and, and sending stuff out to people like come on man um uh, this guy's making small batches maybe 50 100 bottles uh at each time he, he, he's squeezing them out at home and um he's not gonna send the specimen away for testing not in the states it's just not gonna happen bro some dude you're buying from that is is buying the raw materials abroad and making them at home he's not gonna send the specimen and get hot sending a specimen to a lab to get it tested. He's just going to roll out with it. Um, but the really good, good steroids, the good still underground stuff that you can get out there is going to be made abroad in a country where uh, the steroids are not 
like illegal to like really crazy schedule like they are here in the states. And there, uh, sometimes they'll just run them at night, you know, overnight. Uh, some manufacturer facilities that are making just like antibiotics and and regular uh, aspirin kind of stuff uh, throughout the day. And then at night, when uh, everything's shut down, that they run, they got a midnight crew running the steroids for some big guys. And, and uh, or some of them just buy the machinery and bring in the people, hire them to make their stuff and test it out. Remember, uh, the steroids are not illegal in some of these places where they're being made. So these guys can take their sweet time, make a good product, get it tested, make sure they got uh, something that perpetuates their good name. You know, and this is how the, the larger outfits in the game tend to work. Um, so when it comes to getting something like Trembolone or Winstrel, which uh, Winstrel is something that Steve and I are going to be discussing here later on is you have to, you, know, you have to be real careful and make sure you're getting legit stuff. Um, we're going to, give you guys some tips on how to know if you got legitimate stuff, but uh, just start off and, and don't, <clears throat> don't just go around price shopping, uh, go around brand shopping, make sure you get a good legitimate brand, make sure you're getting it from an approved or direct source from a good brand and pay the price, whatever it is. Don't, don't grab a list of uh, steroids that somebody claims they have and, and try to price shop it out. You know, really nowadays with underground labs, you're kind of going to get what you paid for. Some of the upper echelon, larger worldwide brands are going to be at a decent competitive price, but not cheap. Competitive because they tend to run a lot of product. And whenever you have a lot of run, you get to um, sell on volume. Most uh, retail businesses operate this way. So you're going to get a lot of products ran on volume that are going to be somewhat decently priced, but they're not going to be super duper stupid cheap. Once you run across really super duper stupid cheap stuff and you're supposed to put it in a needle and, and shoot it into your muscles, intramuscularly shoot it just completely over, just, just pass through override every defense mechanism your body has against foreign uh, contamination invaders objects and you're just going to you yourself place it right into your body just price shopping it out for the cheapest you can get is it's usually not probably not the best idea or the best way to go about uh shopping for something like that i would say but there's always and, and i had to i had to throw that whole thing in at the beginning of the podcast, really quality, you know, just especially with these two items that tend to be expensive and sought after. Uh, Winstrel tends to be pretty expensive. It always has been compared to other stuff. Uh, Trembolone, it's not the cheapest. It's not super expensive, but it's very much sought after. And so you have a combination of when it comes to Trembolone, it could run out. They'll try to send you something else because our tremble and ran out. It might not be the right color. And they'll say, oh, I got super duper special trend that's clear. You know, when it's kind of sort of been established that trend is always going to um, sort of have that amber tint to it. Different degrees of tinting happens because it, it seems that, and there isn't any real final confirmation of, on this that I found, but it seems that the amber tint on tremble alone comes from uh, some sort of, oxidation of the of the structure itself and, and this is why any of you guys listening right now that have had trend and you held on to it for a long time you notice the tint on the trend got darker as time went on you know what i mean it's not like it's not like vitamin b12 that's going to be red because at its core, it's kind of cobalt. I think it's a structure in the middle of it, so from what I understand. So it's always going to have, it's always going to be that B12 is, oh, it's just going to, going to have that color. But Trembolone itself, the structure itself doesn't have it. There's oxidation that happens 
hence and also temp as there's also some some dependence on the on the color of it by temperature as well which i'm sure um moves that the whole process along and so you know your, your source might just be bullshitting you man you know or maybe giving you less trend than you think you're getting or uh, parting it out, making it 50, you know, 50 trend, 50% trend, 50% testosterone, you know, because it, it's, it's, it's not physically made in any laboratory in the U S it's physically made and compounded out of the country uh, in places like China and India that uh, are the places where unfortunately for everyone that we're finding out, that's where all that machinery li really uh, lives now. So it has to be imported in. And that causes the first barrier to getting good quality stuff is uh, finding the good suppliers in those countries that are willing to risk shipping it because it, it is an issue shipping it out of China for people that live in China, India too, and other places. And then getting it through customs. And when it once it comes in here, if the material good, is the material good quality or not? And... Um, you know, you just don't have the freedom to ship around samples of the material inside of the U.S. to get it tested. It's, it's a different story, guys. It's a completely a different bowl game. Like Ronnie would say, apples and oranges. Uh, when you're uh, talking about compounding the stuff in the U.S. or when the bottles come in already made with their holograms, with their logos, with their shit, and it's coming from a sort of... You know, I should have said certified, sort of kind of bona fide, you know, kind of like the bros agree. This is a good brand. It's been going on for years. They have a good reputation, that, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, sometimes you don't have to get it yourself direct. We all know that. If you visit the forums, you know how a lot of this works. Sometimes, you know, there's going to be a guy in the middle who's going to take uh, the, the risk and, and the brunt of, uh, of everything that goes with trying to get it into the country themselves. And then they're going to, part it out and i'm sure make some money on you getting it to you guys out there that's that's how these things have always worked uh since it started working but back even in the 90s uh there were guys that used to put ads on the back of magazines and they would import the steroids themselves and i'm sure they would sell to their local gyms and when they exceeded that market or they got hot there they would run ads there were ads in the magazines since the 80s and 90s where you could buy steroids sustenance for guys cowboys on the magazines so sort of dynamic has always existed in one level or the other right so going forward yeah definitely um i'm going to talk a little bit more about how trembling works and the effects of it and winstrel obviously and, and compare the two but uh, just to get started off on the topic uh the quality guys the quality of the stuff you're taking is is really important. A uh, quick example before I, I hand the mic over to Steve again. When Winstrel was uh, released for human use, it came in two milligram pills. Two milligrams, like really good quality trend. I'm sorry, I should say again, really good quality Winstrel and trend. Uh, I didn't make a mistake. I'm talking about trend as well, but in that sentence, I meant to say Winstrel, but yeah, good quality Winstrel came in two milligram pills. And that's what the diversion of those meant for pharmaceutical use pills to bodybuilders is where Winstrel use started. But that's what like, if you're thinking about guys like maybe like Zane or some of these guys from that era that could have been taking Winstrel, um, they were popping two MG pills and not like 50 of them a day or something like, like you're shooting, like you're taking 20 milligram Winstrel pills today. No, nah, like really taking just a, a few of those a day and, and really making up the rest of it with really secretive kind of secretive to them at the time, right? Training methodology, dieting uh, uh, methods, you know, tricks uh, going up to competition. They were focused on other things, not so much the steroids. And yeah, some two milligram per pill, Winstrol, whatever they could afford to buy that was diverted from pharmaceutical use in that age it was enough. So the quality of this stuff really matters, especially when you hear guys out there doing 50, 100 milligrams of Winnie a day and look like shit because maybe they're not really getting 50, 100. They're buying by some fly-by-night lab that's made, you know, made in the U.S., you know, which is, 
for supplements is a great tag to have made in the U.S. For steroids, mm, unless you get in with a prescription from a compound and pharmacy made in the U.S. is not a good tag for steroids. It just means they're made in a place where they can't legitimately and often and consistently be sent out for testing and, and, and sent out to make sure that they're safe uh, from heavy metals and things like that, right? So anyway, long story short, handing the mic over to Steve. Steve, tell us a, a little bit more about a Winstrol. I'm sorry, about Trambolone and Winstrol. You know, maybe get yeah. us going on how to use tr uh, Trambolone properly and Winstrol. Yeah. So let's, let's, you know, let's finish up on Trambolone first. Um, get a lot of questions. One of the number one questions we get asked on the forums, and I personally get asked by my clients, is Trembolone acetate versus Trembolone enanthate. And Geneza sells both. Uh, one of their more popular products, Trembolone Acetate, is a, comes in a 10 milliliter vial, 100 milligrams per milliliter. And their Trembolone Enanthate comes in 10 milliliters, 200 milligrams per milliliter. So the Enanthate, you know, it's 200 milligrams per milliliter. So one cc would be 200 milligrams, but the Acetate, one cc would be just 100 milligrams. And the Acetate is a shorter ester, the Enanthate is a longer ester. So your Enanthate ester is about, 10 to 12 days of a half-life. And your S acetate ester, it's just shorter. Uh, it's about a third of that. So with acetate, you want to be injecting it every day or every other day. And then with the enanthate, you want to be injecting it once or twice a week. That's perfectly fine. So what's interesting about these, a lot of guys want to know, which one should I use? So what I recommend is you use the acetate if you're new to trend, because it's going to be in your system quicker. And it's going to be out of your system quicker, which is even more of an important thing here because of the side effects. Now, let's say the side effects get out of control. You can just stop using it. Let's say if you're four, five, six weeks in, whatever, and the side effects get too brutal on it, you can just stop taking it and it'll be out of your system in a couple of weeks. And if they, on the other hand, it's going to take longer to build up in your system and it's going to take longer to be out of your system. So if you're prepared to run it, say eight, 10 weeks, go, you can go with enanthate. But if you want to just stick, run it five or six weeks or seven weeks or even eight weeks and just have it out of your system quicker, then you go with the acetate. And if you don't mind uh, the frequent injections, look, in, in my experience, they're both interchangeable. I haven't noticed any difference between the two in terms of results, strength. And, um, you know, they're both excellent products. So, and if you want the cleanest Trembolone, Geneza is the definitely the way to go. It's the cleanest gear that's out there. So overall, if you're new to Trembolone, you know, 150, 200 milligrams would be the minimal dose per week. And if you're more experienced, 350 to 400 would be a maximum dose. Now, I know for a fact that guys... At the higher levels, let's say you're a high level powerlifter, high level bodybuilder, you're running more than that. You're running 500, 700, 1,000, 1,200 even a week. And, you know, that's a really strong dose. So if you're just a normal gym rat, you don't need to exceed 350 or 400 milligrams a week. I promise you, you can get great results on just 250 milligrams a week. As far as stacking it, I like to stack trend with something mild. I really do. And um, I like to stack it with maybe equ some equipoise, maybe a tiny, tiny amount of testosterone. I would not go high on testosterone. Anavar, Toronto T Bowl, Prima Bolin. You know, those are good options to stack with trend. I would not stack anything harsh with trend. If you stack harsh things with trend, you're going to have a lot more side effects. <clears throat> Trembolone is the nectar of the bodybuilding gods for a reason. And it really needs to be respected. Trust me, when you go on Trembolone after like a week, week and a half, you'll be like, holy moly, my workouts are crazy. Like just, there's nothing like working out when you're on Trembolone. So absolutely Give it a shot, but know what you're getting into. That's why we do these podcasts. Just know about the 
side effects and the risks of using Tremblone and respect it. That's all I ask. But absolutely, everybody should be who's serious about this and who uses steroids should eventually give Tremblone a shot. It is absolutely the nectar of the gods for sure. All right, Rick, you want to move on to Winstroll? Tell us a little bit about Winstroll. So I got a couple of things to um, to go over about trend before we we close up trend. Um, you know, don't be afraid to experiment with it at the really really low dosages. You're going to find a lot of information online saying you need to do 400 a week, 500 a week. This really um, it's really dependent on you and how your body uh, functions on it. Um, <clears throat> I personally have found that just 100 mg a week is enough to give me a lot of the good results that I like from it and just not enough to give me some of the bad side effects that, that I don't like from it. I personally never found Trembolone by itself to be really awesome at either cutting or bulking. However, I noticed that any cycle I did would just be better if I added a little bit of trend on top of it whether I was cutting or whether I was bulking, it was just multiplying the effects. And there's uh, several theories that me and other uh, dudes out there, other gurus have on it uh, from uh, the way it works in your, in your uh, androgen receptors to maybe it uh, making your IGF-1 uh, receptors more sensitive. Just a lot of different theories on it. It is a very active compound out of all the steroids is one of those that is just really it's a very active compound to, to, to say the least and as little as 100 milligrams it just adds that little extra kick to the bulking that that extra extra something to recomp or cutting cycle and you're you're not getting the night sweats you're not getting uh some of that real nasty uh, problems uh, uh, as far as uh, what it does to your kidneys at that doses, you know, it's less toxic at a lower dose should be right. And <clears throat> the problems with sleep, the sleep problems were big for me on Trembolone. I mean, I remember having issues really getting to sleep uh, when I was doing three, four, 500 milligrams of trembolone. I mean, really. Also the, the issues with the orgasms. I mean, it's just so much easier <laughs> uh, to have normal, uh, you know, normal functions when you're not on trend, when you're on it. I mean, you can sometimes have a lot of, just a long time to try to reach the end of it, you know, trying to reach an orgasm. And sometimes um, it's, just not as fun for your partner as it kind of sort of sounds. So these are all considerations, all things that like I noticed very dose dependent, you know, the more tremble on I slammed on, the more these problems came up. The less I use less of these, especially the sleep problem. And, uh, but, you know, at the lower dosing without hurting yourself, without messing up your day and your week, you can get still incredible benefits from it. I mean, it just kind of multiplies the effects of the, of the other stuff you're doing. It's a good, good compound. Just don't do it. Don't do too much uh, of it. I think that's, that's really important. And get, you know, get a good, get good, good quality brand. Go to evolutionary.org. Go to uh, elitefitness.com. Hit both of those up. And hit them today. By the time you listen to this podcast, you know, God knows how long it's been since we've recorded it. So you always want to hit the forums today to hear who's good today, to find out who's who you should really be looking at and, and, and asking for a price for a price list from today, because these things can change very quickly. We've all seen it. Any of us that have been around. Uh, buying anabolics for a long time you know guys are good and then they're bad guys will, will have good shit for a while and then, and then they'll have nothing 
you know, it's, it's just how it goes. And uh, local guys will let you know they have nothing. But sometimes um, those online sources, they might be out of business, but they're still getting emails from people that don't know any better, don't know that they're out of business, and they'll just take the money and never ship. So you always want to make sure to hit the forums up, evolutionary.org, uh, elitefitness.com. Those are the, the two, some of the two oldest and best ones out there. And see who's good today, who's really delivering, who's worth you taking a <coughs> who's uh, worth you taking a look at, and see who's good today. Because no matter, no matter when this podcast was recorded, um, the forums will always deliver you the best guy for what you're looking for today, guys. So that's just a good good rule of thumb there. Um, and as far as trambolone uses. I like an athlete. I like trouble on an athlete. It's kind of been my favorite. Acetate is great uh, for different uses. Um, methyl trembolone, it's just no need to mess with it. It's very toxic to the liver. It's just not one of the orals that I would that I would fuck with. Uh, but trembolone and athlete, great, great product. That one, I think it's about the most versatile one. You can shoot it once a week. You don't have to do it every other day, maybe like you really should, something like acetate. Yes, you do get more active ingredient for your buck in acetate because the ester uh, chain is lower. So uh, such a smaller chain is going to weigh less. If you care about that, maybe grab the acetate. But uh, if you want just to shoot it every third day or you know once or twice a week and uh, Go on with your day, man. The anathic version of trambolone is a really, really nice one. And there's there's some good ones out there from uh, uh, different brands. We'll, we'll get a little bit more into it at the end of the episode. But yeah, man, it's it's just good quality, a trend, 100 to 200 a week is where I've stayed at. But some guys, and look, I've, I've dealt with folks, guys who know their shit, big dudes that tell me like, Rick, you're crazy. I need 400, I need 600 milligrams of trembolone a week before I even know it's doing something. I don't, I don't, I don't break a sweat in my sheets unless I'm doing 600 milligrams of trembolone. 100, 200 makes it feels like nothing. I don't know what you're talking about, Rick. I've, I've ran into guys like that and maybe you're like that. Your own experimentation is going to lead you to where you need to be when it comes to your dosages, right? But really, when it comes to trend, start off a small, maybe try the higher dosing. Don't be afraid to go back down. Figure out where you need to be with it, just like every other compound. I've personally found 100 to 200 megs a week. Get all the benefits that I want to get out of it and none of the bad side effects that kind of ruin my week that just make it not worth it for me. Your dosage might be different. You might be a 50 milligram guy. You might be a 500 milligram guy. You kind of have to kind of journal. So I've said in the other podcast, journal it. Make a little diary of your diary. You're shooting my trend today. This is how I feel. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you know, be able to look back on it now, see what you were using and how you were feeling. Don't, don't try to go out of bad memory. Um, but yeah, that's trend. Winstrom. Uh, what do you got on Winstrom, Steve? So let me go over the types of Winstrom that Geneza has to offer. So Everyone knows about the oral version of Winstrol. They've got a 10 milligram oral version tablets. They have a 50 milligram oral version tablet. So why pick the 10 milligram if you can just take 50 milligram in one shot? Well, one of the reasons is if you're a female or you have a spouse who's a female and you want them to try some, the 10 milligram would be an option for them because that would be a dosage for a woman, for women, 10 milligrams or five milligrams. So they cut it in half. The other reason is some people like to kind of take a little, uh, you know, a few of them in the morning, a few of them in the evening. So let's say you're going to take 50 milligrams a day. You take 20 milligrams in the morning, 30 milligrams in the evening. So you take two pills and then three pills or three pills and two pills, vice versa, versus just getting the 50 and taking it all in one shot or splitting the 50 into a 25, 25 a.m. p.m. Now, you can run Winstrol once a day or twice a day. That's fine. Uh, 
you know, it's, it's got a long enough half-life where if you take it on a consistent basis daily, it would be in your system 24 seven. You got to remember what half-lives mean guys. Uh, half-lives mean half of it is going to be in your system after the half-life is expired. Not that the half-life isn't how long it's in your system and then magically it's out of your system. Remember, these are hormones. You know, these are hormones that stagger in the body. The third type of winstrol is going to be a injectable version, which contains 50 milligrams per milliliter of winstrol suspended in water. So with this one, you can inject it or you can just drink it and it still work just the same. So I recommend just drinking it. That's how I've run the liquid version. And, you know, that makes it a lot simple because the injection, ver injection version is very, you know, it's very, uh, who wants to inject? Who wants to inject? And a lot of people complain about the pain of injecting. I tried injecting it before, quite painful. I didn't like it. So you just drink it instead of having to inject it. So those are the three types. And at the end of the day, you know, we go back to what I said about the tremble on the dosing. If you're just a normal gym rat, 25 to 50 milligrams a day for a man, five to 10 milligrams a day for a woman, that's it. But the pros and the, the guys who are really into physique and really want that beach body, they'll run it higher. They might run 75. They might run 100, even 125, 150 for excessive amounts for, for bodybuilders, especially those who are going into a show or competing. And the reason for that is Winstrol dries you out incredibly well. In fact, it's one of the more mandatory steroids for competitors to use because of its ability to dry you out and give you those cuts and give you that dry look that looks incredible. You know, so, and again, you want to make sure you know, I talked about this on prior podcasts. We haven't mentioned it yet. With Winstrol, a lot of you guys may not be quote unquote qualified to run Winstrol. And what do I mean by that? I mean that I really believe to run Winstrol and get the benefits from Winstrol, you really have to be no more than 11 or 12% body fat. So if you're 13, 14, 15% body fat, cut down a couple percentage get yourself lower, get yourself more trim where you can start seeing your abs. And then you can run the windstraw to really be able to see those muscles on your body where they're not covered up by fat. If you're over 15%, over 20% body fat, what is the point of harden, of drying out your body and hardening, hardening up those muscles and getting the vascularity going where those veins are popping out if it's just covered with fat and you're not going to be able to get that incredible vascularity, you know, vascularity, big part of vascularity is genetics. It's other factors, but it's also being lean. So the leaner you are, the more vascular you're, you're capable of getting, you know, all things being equal, right? So really get your body fat as low as possible before you touch Winstrol. And it's a great, great finisher for a cycle to throw in because of that. So if you're looking to do a cycle where you're recomping or you're looking to cut down, you can run that wind stroll and really get the body that you really, really want to strive for. And it's an incredible steroid, very, very strong steroid. Have, you got to respect it. You know, you've got to respect it. I was using wind stroll before and I had a lot, I started getting headaches and I never get headaches. Wind stroll was giving me headaches. Wind stroll was shedding my head hair, you know, it has side effects. In that situation, I lowered the dose. I lowered the dose. So I really like 25 to 50 milligrams. That's it. I won't run any, any more than that. That works great for me. And most of you, that's going to be the dosage for you. So, you know, it's, it's, that's that simple, really. Another thing that Winstrol does very well is it binds to SHBG, sex hormone, um, <coughs> sex hormone binding globulin. And what that does is it allows the other steroids that are in your cycle to work even better. So it will, it will make your cycle more powerful if you include it in your cycle. It'll make the other steroids work, work even better. So keep that in mind. I'm all about saving people money. And that's why a lot of people like Winstrol because they can use it in a cycle and use less dosing from their other steroids 
because of that, because it binds to SHBG so well. Another thing you got to worry about, liver toxicity. When stroll is liver toxic. So you got to run your liver support. You got to run your N2 guard, right? Another thing it does, cholesterol, throws your cholesterol off. Just like all, most steroids, it's going to throw off your cholesterol. So you want to make sure that you, before you go on Winstrol, that your cholesterol levels are already where they need to be. You don't want to have bad cholesterol and then take Winstrol. doesn't make any sense. Same thing with liver. You don't want to have bad liver and then take Winstrol. doesn't make any sense. So Rick, what else you got on Winstrol that you want to touch on? Uh, so Winstrol is, is uh, whether it is injectable or in oral form, it is the exact same hormone. You know, when it comes to trambolone, like you have uh, different ester chains, even for the injectable version, and then you have the oral version, which is a uh, methyl trambolone. But no, it, Winstrol is all methyl, whether you're injecting it or whether you are uh, taking it orally. So even the injection doesn't have an ester chain. It, you're, you're kind of hoping that the, the crystallization of it in the, in the muscle is what is going to kind of slow release it throughout the day. So you can only, so you only have to shoot it once a day. Some guys used to shoot it once every other day. And uh, Winstrol will always impact your liver, even the injectable version. When it comes to, to Trembolone, an athlete is not really going to do a lot to hurt your liver, but when it comes to the methyl version as well. Winstrol, the injectable version, will have an impact on your liver for sure. That's a given. And uh, you got to make sure to take liver support like N2Guard. Go to N, the number two, guard.com. And uh, something like that you always want to take, even with the injectable version of the Winstrol, you just can't get away from it. You have to act like, like you're taking any hard or oral, like you're taking any hard day-to-day -day oral, that is how you have to treat that Winstrol. So make sure you do that. Don't, don't, you know, don't be a fool. We need, you really only want to stay on for four to six weeks. If you have a coach, uh, he might have you stay on it longer. Uh, we have a guy on our, uh, um, on our uh, Facebook forum, uh, Steve, who reported being on oh, uh, something like a hundred milligrams, both Winstrol and and Anavar for like 10 weeks going up to a competition. The guys that are competing <laughs> are going to run stuff longer and, and do a lot harsher things than the guys that are not. So obviously, if you have a coach, he might have you on Winstrol for 10 weeks. Not something I would recommend, but that's the journey that you and him are on. So that's, I guess, what you guys would do. Wouldn't be part of my advice. But if you're just listening to this, trying to figure it out on your own, just trying to look good with your shirt off, don't need to be on Winstrol more than four to six weeks, man. I mean, Winnie, it'll help you dry up. It'll help you maintain that muscle mass as you cut down. It'll help you get shredded if you're going up to like a photo shoot or, or even, you know, whatever, uh, some day that you want to look good by for whatever reason it is. Well, Winstrol can and work for you, but you want to stay with it. I mean, just four to six weeks. So you want to do, you don't want to go too crazy on it. Don't want to do it for too long. And you want to make sure you get a legitimate win straw. You know, it's a, it's a good theme to the whole podcast. Uh, go to elitefitness.com, go to evolutionary.org. See who's good. Make sure you get good quality win straw. Win straw is one of the more expensive steroids. And a lot of you got, a lot of you newbies out there that don't know the steroid well enough can get fooled. They, they will uh, send you something different instead of that win straw maybe a little bit of Tarina ball or something. I mean, something cheaper and you'll feel like you got something, but you really didn't you really did not So you want to make sure that you get a good, good brand that is delivering today. And the forums is the best way to get and find out who's good today. Good Winstrol, as long as it is legit Winstrol, you're getting what you paid for and have great results is one of the more aesthetically impacting steroids, meaning uh, something like, let's say, for example, uh, DECA. DECA will help you gain some serious mass. And look, if you're in a caloric deficit and you take DECA, you, you, you'll lose body fat on it. But it's just not going to make you look super chiseled. It's not what it does. Winstrol, on the other hand, 
Winstrol will make you look super fucking dry and chiseled, like super good. It's what it does. It's one of the, uh, we, uh, Steve and I did a podcast on the evolutionary radio podcast about uh, steroids, the best ones for, for looking good, for aesthetics. And Winstrol is up there. It's just one of those that makes your skin drier, makes you look good. It's just, it's one, but it's one to take advantage of. I mean, do it well, get the, get the fasting down, get the caloric deficit in the way you're really supposed to run it for the four to six weeks. That is only safe to do it and, and be done with it, man. You know, Winstrol is, is really, it's really that good. So um, definitely uh, dosage wise, uh, like I've, I heard guys doing hundred megs going up to competition. Um, I'll usually say between 20 to 60 milligrams a day is fine. Four to six weeks. So you need on it to really, you know, cut down, chisel down. Look, if you're, if you're 30 pounds body fat overweight, maybe, maybe a four or six week winstrol cycle ain't going to cut it for you, bro. But like, if you're 12% body fat and you're trying to get to like nine or eight to just get, to just get the summer kind of rocking, just get, just get, just get it started four weeks trying to get there and you're cutting down calories yeah winstrol might be just what you need bro to go from 12 to 8 12 to 9 percent body fat um and just four five six short weeks while you're you know cutting down calories yeah some good high quality legitimate weenie might might, might be your might be your best tool i'm just saying so it really depends where you're at and what, what you're what you're doing that really kind of determines dosage and, and whether you should even use it or not. Yeah, Winstrola. In this podcast, we're talking about Trembolone and Winstrola. I'll lay it out like this. Trembolone, I feel, is just a little addition and additive to put into something you're already doing, cutting or, or bulking, whatever. You throw that trend in, small dose, it'll work. A Winnie, on the other hand, it's just a good standalone steroid. You could literally just take Winstrol, 50, 60, 70 megs a day, whatever, six weeks. And that could be just the base of your whole cutting stack. And then just cut, cut, you know, just caloric deficit, tons of cardio, uh, weightlifting, you know, 75 milligrams, 50 milligrams of Winnie per day and go. And you're done. It's a good standalone steroid. It's going to give you great results. And it's going to really change the way you look physically, providing you know you're doing all the right things and you get good legitimate stuff. Get a good, good brand, legitimate stuff for your steroid. What else you got, Steve? Yeah, at the end of the day, it's all about quality for sure. And um, you know, can you combine Trembolone and Winstrel? Sure, you can combine them, but you got to be careful with combining them. Um, I've used them both together and my head hair really took a beating and I'm not even pro in the head hair law. So, you know, they're not the best ones to stack together in my opinion, but a lot of guys do and they, they have tremendous results on it. If you can, if you don't mind, you know, the head hair loss issue, you know, it can be a really, really good one. Uh, really good stack to use them together. So in that case, I do like 200, 250 of the trend and I do like 25 of the wind straw a day. That's it, you know, and that should be uh, that should be a good stack together. And recomping, everyone wants to recomp. That's the unicorn of bodybuilding. And using Trembolone from GP and wind straw from GP was a great, you know, those are great compounds to recomp with to get you uh the goals that you're after so i think it was a really really good show rick and um you know we covered a lot of information on this but if you have any other questions you know definitely let us know but we'll have another episode coming soon um one thing to close it up with uh in regards to uh winnie and tremble um, those are two that I don't really like using and mixing together. Um, Winstrol, Trambolone, Anadrol, and DECA, they all live in that same family where they all have the ability to attach to progesterone receptors and have the different effects on them, you know? Um, and so I personally have always had an issue with those steroids messing with my dick. 
I mean, Trembolone will make, will give me trend dick. How about that? Trembolone will give me motherfucking trend dick. And so I have to be real, real careful, real easy about how I use these compounds when and how, because if I don't use them properly, um, I'm either not going to be able to get, have an orgasm at all, or my dick is just not going to get hard at all. You know what I'm saying? So uh, those are really ones that I don't like mixing together in the same cycle. Uh, there are freaks out there who will, you know, write in the comments on the, on YouTube, you crazy Rick. I use trend and wastrel every day for a year. You know, look guys, if everybody's built differently internally, you got to know what works for you and what doesn't journaling and looking back through your notes is going to help and go a long way in helping you in that regard. But really at the end of the, at the, end of the day, man, you got to, um, you got to know what mixes well together. And those four, I'm really afraid of mixing together. Deca being the first one that just kills my dick, unless I run it along with, with uh, testosterone. Trembolone being the one that just gives me trend dick, as I've said, but I just can't fucking finish. It's terrible. And Winstrol will sometimes make it feel kind of weird and softy. And, and Anadrol is just like, dude, it's, it's trying to get up at the wrong times of the day. It's, it's weird. So those I've always been really kind of uh, afraid of. They, it's just the way they work on me. So just got to know what what and how it works on you and and go from there, man. But but yeah, that was my my closing uh, on, on on those particular compounds. Evolutionary.org, EliteFitness.com. Those are the the places you want to hit up, and you want to make sure you are uh, you know you get in your your information and where you grab your stuff from, man. That's, you know, get the latest info. Go there. That's it, buddy. Great show. We'll talk to you guys next month. We'll have another one. Have a good one, Steve. Have a good one, guys.